All right, for it, we just finished our GIF animation assignment, and now we're going to look at assignment six, which I call a vector logo mashup project. Now, every semester I have a different theme. It always starts with sketches, either digital sketches or hand done sketches. And then we learn how to turn our vision into a clean vector of our own creation. And we'll talk about what vectors are. And then we create a black and white version and a color version. But I do call it a logo project. And the, the thing about logos, here's the sketch, here's the black, black and white version, is they have to be readable at a distance. They have to scale, go from small to big and still be effective. And that can definitely be a challenge. <coughs> This one actually hides uh, Earth Day in the leaf itself. Earth Day. And it's there. <laughs> but uh, you have to know it's there to find it. But it works because the thickness of the line and kind of the elegance of the line work, it works as a tiny image. It works as a really large image. Even though you have that, that way hidden read. That's just something that keeps the designer engaged. Now, there's a reason that we, we're doing this project now as our first kind of create your own image project instead of compositing. Because shape is everything. When you're making vectors, and even, this is what's difficult, even when you're sketching for vectors, don't think of it as creating lines. Think of it as cutting out shapes. The most effective black logos are going to be cutouts of shapes, right? And that's really how vectors are made to work. Like you take black paper and scissors and you're making vectors. And they're perfectly clean, no pixels involved. And then once you have that, adding color is no problem. Because if it works as a black shape, it's going to work in color. <coughs> color just adds to it. But if you took the color away from this one, for instance, there's not enough there to kind of hold your eye, because it's treated as lines instead of as solid shapes. So the black and white version has to keep solid shapes as part of it. Again, cutouts, very effective. Even textures can be worked out as cutout shapes. And on and on and on. So in order to do this, we have to learn a little bit about vectors. And to do that, I like to show a video that uh, an early digital student of mine made, who was one of the rare students that came into this class with more experience with vector imaging than with raster imaging. I know some of us, we have no experience coming to this class at all with digital art, but he really liked um, building an illustrator. So he made this whole animation using Flash, which is a vector animation pr project. And it just explains what vectors are. Now, he uses some kind of outdated terminology. Instead of raster, he uses the term bitmap, which is another term for, for pixel-based images. Let's see. What do I have it? There it is. Get the volume up a little bit. So we call that raster. All right, that is huge. So raster images, pixel-based images, what he calls bitmap images, but we'll be talking about another way of understanding bitmap a little bit later. Um, these files, 
vector format files do not store a finite number of pixels. Which means you can use the same vector file to make any size image. Okay? There's no pixels involved, so you don't have any resolution problems going large to small. So the grammar of vector digital art is completely different than pixel-based art, than raster art. Photoshop is a really complicated program with lots of options, but ultimately it gives you control of pixels. You can control every pixel. The ultimate raster program. You can make digital paintings, control every pixel, soften them, change colors, millions of colors, whatever you want. In vectors, you don't have that kind of particular control. Instead, you control what you make in two dimensions by making an outline, right? That outline is called the, the stroke. So if you want an outline to exist, you create a path, but a path is invisible. It's a vector. It goes from one point and ends at another point, and it goes in a certain direction. If you outline that path, you get a stroke. <laughs> if you close that path, to make a closed shape, like if I take scissors to a piece of construction paper and I cut out a circle, I have to complete the circle before I have a cutout of the circle, right? Otherwise, I just have a curve. So when you have a closed path, then you can choose to fill it. And then you can either choose to have it filled and outlined with a stroke or just filled without any stroke outline. And then it's just a shaped piece of paper. So you may be asking right about now, if vectors are based on algorithms, does that mean that I know too bad to use them? Well, thanks to Pierre, the answer is no. Manipulating vector shapes is, is easy and completely bad and free. There's also brush and pencil glue that can turn natural strokes into the vector shape. Also, just like him. All right. So this this is important. I love this this animation. This student's name was Chris Lilly. And Tons of credit, and I, I helped him with a little, little bit, and the hardest part was doing this little bit of animation here, but it's incredibly important. Okay, this is what's called the pen tool, and we have not used it yet, right? But the pen tool is the dominant tool in Illustrator. Though Illustrator has gotten good enough now that we could get away with not using it at all if you hate it, because a lot of people hate it. But this is how the pen tool works. This is the <laughs> easiest way to plot a path. You click somewhere with the pen tool, and it's like using a fountain pen. It looks like a fountain pen, and it makes a little dot, right? That's what's called an anchor. Then you drag out from that anchor, like you would with a fountain pen, and connect it to another puddle of ink, right? Which is a new anchor. But then this is where it's totally different. You're not drawing in between those two points. You're plotting. So you're putting one anchor down, and then the next anchor, and then if you click on that anchor and drag, you get what are called Bezier handles after the Bezier guy. And that will set the curve. So if you don't want there to be a curve, oh, I love that. Oh, it's so satisfying. All right. So if you don't want it to be a curve, if you want it to be a straight line, you don't pull out the handles, right? 
But because if there are handles, there is a curve. And the longer the handles, the, the bigger the curve. And the, the more angled the handles, the deeper the curve. And it can be curved towards the middle. And you can hold down shift and it will always pull up the handle at 45 degrees and it will be an even curve. Or it can be a lopsided curve towards the front or the back anchor. Now, if you can imagine that, you can then plot as many anchors as you want with as many complex curves between those anchors and you have the ability to make any two-dimensional shape just using anchors and paths. And that's how Illustrator is conceived. That's what called the international strokes with the vector shape. Also, so my favorite way to use Illustrator, and this is all very individual, is to use pencil tools and blob brush tools, which create those paths for you. And then you have anchors that you can manipulate, but you can still kind of draw the paths. And the computer will automatically set the anchors and the curves for you. So there's different ways to do it, but ultimately we're making cutouts. Just like in a bitmap program, you can use layers and layer groups to get vectors. But these are just the basics, so it seems to be All right, so that is hugely helpful. So just like Photoshop, the first thing we learned in Photoshop with rasters and pixels is how to layer things up. Layers are essential in Photoshop to controlling things. In Illustrator, layers are completely optional because every time you make a new path, it will be saved as a unique path, right? They're not really layers, they're paths. And you can individually select them. Every anchor is individually selectable. But we will use layers as an organizational tool because Illustrator allows you to lock layers, just like Photoshop does. But locking layers becomes so much more important in Illustrator when you're trying to isolate the things you're working on. So we'll use layers as an organizational tool, not as an essential uh, imaging tool. All right, so I'm going to show you how to play with it. Because, yeah, the only way you're going to learn Illustrator and see if you like it or not, if you're one of those, I'd say, one in 50 people that likes Illustrator, <laughs> uh, you, you will all start to value its uses, right, and the beauty of clean vector imaging. And then we'll learn all the ways you can convert raster images into vector images and manipulate them from there. So you know how at the very beginning of class, we, I don't even have Illustrator open, uh, we drew a little self-portrait on our ID cards, right? And then I took a photograph of you. And that was a raster example. Well, now I'd like you to open up Adobe <laughs> Illustrator. For the first time this semester, and we're going to try to draw a self-portrait in Illustrator, right? In Photoshop, that's not a big deal. It's a lot like drawing it on a, on a card with a pencil. In Illustrator, I'm going to show you a way you can do it kind of like that. And then I'm going to show you other ways you can do it. But it's about as hard as cutting it out of a sheet of paper, right? But there are advantages. If if you zoomed in on the drawings you did on your cards, they become more and more broken up as the little um, graphite molecules and fragments from your pencil are crushed into the paper. They soften and they disperse and the line becomes less and less clean, right, as you zoom in. Same thing with the photograph. I took a, a picture of you guys. It has a limited pixel resolution. As I zoom in on those pixels, things get softer and softer. If we can make a self-portrait as a vector, we can zoom in on it as much as we want, and it won't get softer and softer. It will keep its sharpness. Just like if we cut it out of paper, we can zoom in on the cut, and the cut will never become uh, more diffused. All right, so you're going to go to File, New, And we want to go to print. We create print files, and we might as well just you do a letter, and then just put your name and self-portrait. This is just to play in Illustrator. So I'll call it self-portrait vector playground. The other beauty is, because we're plotting anchors, 
it takes up very little memory. Mm -hmm. 